um, 1 Kings 8, 22 through 26. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread forth his hands towards heaven. This was in a symbolism of praising God. He was giving glory to God for the temple being built and giving praise to him for having built the temple. Um, we oftentimes think of certain things as just handed to us when we have full reason to praise the Lord for them. Verse 23. And he said to the Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you. There is no other God at all. But he's saying um, that these idols, these man-made gods, these people that they, the ideas of their worship, the pagan views of what they did, who God truly is, is it even somehow if them stories were true, it's no comparison to who God truly is, is what he's saying. Of course, he ain't accepting that any other God is true or anything of that nature. But I feel that's what he's saying. If their stories were true, which they're not, they don't compare to who, what the truth is about you. In heaven above or on earth beneath, who kept... It, who keep covenant and, and loving kindness with your servants who will walk who walk before you with all their heart. So you know, Christianity, the faith, is different than religion. Religion's working to become in fellowship with God, trying to earn salvation. Christianity he gave us, you know. While we try to please God, religion is make a path to God. Christianity, God came to us to make that path. So, in you know, distinctions. So there's more love and grace, which isn't known in religion. It's about work and devotedness, which Christianity is. But we can be devoted and loved. Um, verse 24. Who have kept your servant with your servant David, my father, that which you ha did promise him. Yes, you spoke with your mouth and have fulfilled with your hand as it, it is this day. He's referring to the temple being built. God promised that he would, Solomon would build the temple to David. And Solomon's praising God that he fulfilled that promise. God always keeps his promises. This is one of the many reasons we have to praise him. Verse 25. Now therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, keep with your servants, David, my father, that which you have promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, if only the children take heed to their way. To walk before me as you have walked before me. Now, in, in part, this is a conditional promise. Which is why there is no king reigning on the throne of Israel today. Because the throne is in heaven. And this um, promise is ultimately fulfilled with Christ who is still king and reign. And will come back to set up an earthly reign. And he's a descendant, earthly descendant of David. But, it's also conditional saying if they um, fail... In the sight of the Lord, this promise is gone, which Solomon would do, which many of them would do, and then ultimately lead to the exile where they'd never be a king, set up his reign in Israel again. God would keep his end of this promise and actually go beyond, because there's other promises in that tied to Jesus. Sometimes we got to keep ours too be where we need to be with God but he still has promises that he's going to keep even when we fail verse 26 now therefore God of Israel please let your word be verified which you spoke to your servant David my father so he's saying keep this promise 
He, I believe he has faith that this promise is going to be kept. He's praising God for keeping this promise. That he's kept the one and he's going to keep this one. Which he did. And still would.